Do you know the dark origins behind the fairy tales we all grew up hearing? Today we're talking about the original scary story of Hansel and Gretel, which was actually a reflection of the real horrors of the Great Famine of 1315, when many people took extreme measures to survive. It's during this time that Hansel and Gretel's parents abandoned them in the woods. It was only in later editions that the mother became the evil stepmother character. Hansel takes breadcrumbs and leaves them behind, but they're eaten by birds. So they wander into the cottage built of candy where they meet the witch. The next morning, the witch locks up Hansel and makes Gretel feed him a lot of food while she gets only crab shells. Once the witch decides that Hansel is ready to be eaten, she makes Gretel open the oven to see if it's hot enough. Gretel pretends to be confused so the witch has to demonstrate. When the witch leans into the oven, Gretel pushes her in and shuts the door. They take the witch's belongings and find their way home, but the interesting part is, after the witch is defeated, Hansel and Gretel's mother dies of unknown causes, suggesting a kind of connection between the witch and the mother. One survived by abandoning her children, and the other survived by eating others, both in some ways motivated by desperation. But which fairy tale should I talk about next? Follow to see the rest of the series. Have you ever seen someone with extremely long hair? Well, a man from Yamada Village in Japan saw a woman with very long hair, nearly down to her knees, but things were much stranger than they seemed. He was walking down a narrow street when this woman approached him, and as he walked closer, he realized that she'd been smiling the whole time. But this wasn't a normal, friendly smile. There was something strange about it that made him feel creeped out. But he smiled back anyways because he found her beautiful. This would be his last mistake. In that moment, her hair rose up and stuck to him. Strands of hair hooked onto his clothes. He he ran as fast as he could, terrified. He got home quickly, locked the door, but couldn't fall asleep all night. The next morning, he felt a bit better, so he opened the door to try to go to work, but he saw that on the other side, his door was covered in scratches. He had run into Hariona, the long-haired woman from Japanese urban legend whose hair can turn into hooks. She's also known as a smiling woman, as she usually smiles at people from the shadows and also specifically targets men who smile back at her. Comment below what you would do if you ran into her and follow to see more. Do you know the dark origins behind the fairy tales we all grew up hearing? Today we're going to talk about one of my most requested stories. Here's the original scary story of the Little Mermaid, which my gosh is so much sadder than the one we're all used to. First of all, Ariel's sisters were basically sirens. They lured sailors into the water. In the prince, he wasn't particularly a great guy. It's said that he had a lot of um workers who were women in his palace, but Ariel loved the prince, so she goes to Ursula to make a deal. She would give up her voice for legs, but every step she takes on land would be extremely painful, and she will only survive if the prince falls in love with her, but in the original, things don't go as planned. The prince ends up marrying another woman, so Ursula gives Ariel a new choice to make. This time, if Ariel wants to live, she has to take the prince out. So basically, Ariel breaks into the prince's palace where him and his new wife was, but she couldn't go through with the deal. Then she dissolves into foam. But since she was a good person, her spirit floats up into the sky and is able to carry out good deeds for 300 years before going to heaven. So yeah, not exactly the same story as the one we all know. But which fairy tale should I talk about next? Follow to see the rest of the series. Okay, so can we please talk about how McDonald's is responsible for one of the biggest conspiracies? Yes, McDonald's. It became a massive FBI investigation and involved one of the biggest Italian mob families in New York. Well, around 1987, there was a little bit of a decline in the fast food industry and McDonald's was really feeling it. So they were like, oh my gosh, how can we improve our sales? And this is when they decided to partner with Simon Marketing. And they had some amazing business ideas. They helped them come up with the Happy Meal and they helped them come out with the Monopoly game. I don't if you guys remember this but i used to play it a lot as a kid you would get this little sticker that you could peel off on the back of drinks boxes it would offer you a free big mac a drink upgrade but some of them offered way bigger prizes like jet skis cars all the way up to a million dollars yeah i never found one of those but you could always bring it back and add it to your monopoly board and anyone could participate even if you didn't buy anything from them like you could just go in and ask for a chip or else it would have been considered gambling and mcdonald's sales jumped 40 percent, so they were making bank but it didn't take long for someone to tip off the fbi Part two on the McDonald's conspiracy. So the thing about their Monopoly game is that it was a one in 250 million chance of winning. That is less than the lottery. But one day the FBI was tipped off that the past three winners were from the same family. Like that's actually impossible. And the name that was dropped for who was controlling all of this was Uncle Jerry. Obviously, this is a massive accusation to make. So the FBI was like, okay, let's look into this. And what do you know? All of the recent winners were from the Jacksonville area. So they were like, okay, is it someone at Mickey D's? Makes the boxes, delivers it. Either way, they had to call an immediate meeting with the McDonald's company. They didn't tell them why. They were just like, hey, you guys need to come down here. I would have been scared out of my mind if the FBI didn't tell me why they needed me. But the second the employees got there and sat down, they presented them with the case. And they were shocked. They were like, that is absolutely not possible. It's so rare to win this game, they should not be coming from from the same area and it was causing a major freak out but luckily the timing was perfect because they were about to release their next monopoly game and this way they could catch someone in the act 
What if someone gave you a present, but you had no idea how important it was until it was too late? Once there was an old man who was obsessed with money. He lived in a mansion with his wife, but he would make his wife do everything for him because he didn't want to pay anyone else to help. But one day he grew sick, so he had to hire a housekeeper. But he could have never expected what happened next. One day a man arrived at the mansion to ask for food. No one was home except the housekeeper, so she gave him a bag of rice and told him to leave quickly before the old man found out. The man took the bag of rice, thanked the housekeeper, and gave her a face cloth in return. Before he left, he said that if she washed her face with it every day, she would become very beautiful. But there was a catch. If anybody else used it, there would be severe consequences. The housekeeper began washing her face with the cloth and pretty soon she became the most beautiful person in town. The old man was jealous and when he found out she got the cloth after she gave food to a stranger, he said it belonged to him because the rice she gave away was his to begin with. So he took the cloth and began using it for himself, ignoring the man's warning. His wife and the housekeeper looked in disbelief at what it did to him. As the old man looked up, they saw the face of a monster with red eyes staring back at them. Part three on the McDonald's conspiracy. So what exactly is a conspiracy? It's a secret plan made by a group to do something harmful or unlawful. And it didn't take long for this next Monopoly game to have a new winner. His name was Michael Hoover. The FBI decided to make a fake production company to act like they were doing a big commercial for him winning when they were actually secretly interrogating him. So they were asking him questions. He went into detail on how he found the chip, how he was gonna buy a boat and name it Ruthless Scandal. And then the FBI being one step ahead had already tapped him. So when he left, they heard his phone call in which he basically laughed and said that he pulled it off that they actually think he's gonna buy a boat called ruthless scandal but they hear the name uncle jerry talked about again so they had to do a deeper dive into who was working for them and well the company they partnered with simon marketing there was a guy who was head of security named jerome jacobson he oversaw the whole process not only did he head all of security but he also designed it as well on top of this he was responsible for taking the chip to the mcdonald's location but if the process was so thorough how was he pulling it off Part four to the McDonald's conspiracy. So what exactly made them suspicious of Jerome Jacobson? Well, the people that were getting the chips were all around where he lived. Like his nephew, his butcher. Which like, how can you be that stupid? You need to actually be spreading these out. But essentially what he was doing when he was on his way to those McDonald's locations was stopping at the airport bathroom, breaking the seal, taking the piece out and resealing it and leaving the bathroom. So he walked out with the prize piece and he was selling them off. For example, he sold one worth 200000 or 45000 to his nephew. Obviously, he realized it was looking a little sketchy, so he decided to get someone else involved named Jerry Colombo. I know it's a little confusing because they're both Jerry. He belonged in one of the five crime families that dominated New York. He wanted to promise his daughter a chip. And if you didn't know this, that's why Jerome Jacobson was being called Uncle Jerry. I guess uncle is a term of respect in the mafia. And together, they all teamed up to pick other winners, like Gloria Brown, who paid 40 grand for a million dollar chip. And even Jerry Colombo himself got a Dodge Viper. With all this info, the FBI was about to make their arrest. Part five to the McDonald's conspiracy. The last place that Jerry sent it to before he was caught was St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I guess he decided to do something positive with his chips, but they did use that to track him down. And yes, McDonald's did let the Children's Hospital keep the million dollar chip. But Uncle Jerry was being followed by about 25 FBI agents and was officially caught. Him and eight others were arrested and five were indicted for collecting false prize. Jerome Jacobson had stolen up to 60 game pieces. He served 35 months in prison and had to pay 12.5 million in restitution. He's free though now and in his 70s. Jerry Colombo actually died in a car accident, so he was not arrested. And there's a lot of stuff around that being an inside job. It was a really sketchy car accident, and sometimes you just don't know with the mafia. Well, Simon Marketing and McDonald's sued each other back and forth. But Burger King responded by suing McDonald's for false advertising a promotion while knowing that the game was compromised. And they eventually just dropped the case. McDonald's started to give away a lot of cash prizes in response, and they officially stopped the game in 2016. Let me know what other conspiracies you want to hear about. If you play an instrument, don't do what he did. Once there was a man known as the best guitar player in the world. He would play on the streets of his city and he made quite a good living from it because everyone knew who he was. Until one day something terrifying happened. A rich man came up to him and said he wanted to hire the guitar player to perform at his private party. The guitar player agreed instantly. He arrived at the rich man's mansion, full of people waiting to see him play. And afterwards at night he walked home alone. That's when something he could never explain happened. He heard a sound coming from the bushes behind him. And suddenly a stranger appeared. This stranger stranger asked, that's a very beautiful guitar, can I play it? The guitar player agreed and handed it to him. And this stranger played even better than he did. He was shocked and said, that's amazing. The stranger replied, of course, I was a guitar player when I was alive. The guitar player ran and ran, not even looking back to get his guitar back. He thought this would be the end of it, but he was wrong. The next day, he opened up his door to find his guitar lying there. And a ghostly voice coming in from the hallway saying, here, I brought your guitar back. 
Can you solve this mystery? This is the story of two friends who got into an accident while they were camping. But someone is hiding something and not everything is as simple as it might seem. All the clues to what really happened are hidden in what I'm about to say. So these two friends, a young man and woman, went camping together in the woods. The man said that he knew his way around because he went camping there all the time. So he ended up leading the way. They arrived at a long rope bridge that they both had to cross to get to the other side. The woman went first, but something was wrong. One of the boards on the rope bridge came loose. She accidentally stepped through, but managed to grab the rope just in time to save herself from falling. She shouted to her friend for help, but he said that he was too scared to get on the bridge now. She finally pulled herself up to safety where her friend said, are you okay? She said, yeah, I'm fine, but that could have ended up a lot worse. And her friend replied, you're right. Someone should really fix the ropes on the bridge. What really happened here? And who's the one that's hiding something? Can you solve this mystery? Do you know the story behind your zodiac sign? Here's one of the weirdest zodiac sign stories out there. This is the origin story of Capricorn. The story begins when Mother Earth had some serious beef with the gods, enough that she sent a fire-breathing monster named Typhon to fight them. And this is where the forest god Pan comes in. He had legs and horns of a goat. He told Zeus and the other gods to disguise themselves as animals in order to avoid Typhon. And while the other gods were disguised, Typhon approached Pan and was about to attack. So Pan panicked and jumped into the river Nile. Because of this, the lower half of his body, which was underwater, transformed into a fish, while the upper half stayed a goat. So that's why we have this sea goat creature to represent Capricorn, but that's not all. Zeus ended up battling Typhon and had the muscles in his hands pulled out. Pan healed him, which allowed Zeus to defeat Typhon in the end. Because of this, Zeus immortalized the image of Pan in the sky as the constellation of Capricorn. But which zodiac sign should I talk about next? Follow to see the rest of the series. Do you know the story behind your zodiac sign? This story is pretty wild. This is the origin story of Aquarius. The story begins when Zeus became interested in a young man named Ganymede. So he turned into an eagle, took Ganymede to Mount Olympus, and made him his new cupbearer. This meant his job was to basically pour the gods' divine drinks. And here's where the drama begins. When Ganymede became the cupbearer to the gods, he replaced Zeus's daughter Hebe. Hera, who was Zeus's wife and Hebe's mother, was not happy about this. She wanted her daughter to have the job, and she was jealous of how much attention Zeus was giving a mere human. Now it's uncertain whether Zeus was actually in love with Ganymede, but some variations of the myth include that as well, and say that that's the real reason why Hera was jealous. But pretty soon, Ganymede realized that he didn't like his job. He noticed that people on Earth really needed water but wasn't getting any. In an attempt to help humanity, he poured the gods' drinks onto Earth, causing rain for days and flooded the world. When Zeus found out, he was angry, but then realized Ganymede just really wanted to help people, so he placed him in the stars as the constellation of Aquarius. But which zodiac sign should I talk about next? Follow to see the rest of the series. Have you ever seen a painting that looked extremely realistic? Jake was waiting for his mom when he saw a strangely realistic painting, but he made one mistake that would lead to terrifying consequences. During his mom's doctor's appointment, Jake was sitting alone in the hospital waiting room. That's when he saw the painting. It looked so real, almost like a photo. He was promised ice cream if he sat quietly, but he found himself growing more and more curious. He felt like he needed to move closer to the painting, so he got up and walked towards it. The painting was of an old man, but there was something wrong with it. It seemed like the eyes would follow Jake no matter where he walk. But soon, something even more unbelievable would happen. Something no one can explain. The painting, needless to say, made Jake feel creeped out. But he tried not to feel so scared. It was a painting after all. Then Jake leaned in and saw one weird detail. The old man had unusually long fingers and fingernails. A bit later, Jake's mom came out of the doctor's office, but Jake was nowhere to be found. She called him but got no reply. Then she turned around and saw a very realistic painting on the wall. The boy in the painting looked oddly familiar. Do you know the story behind your zodiac sign? This story is probably one of the most interesting zodiac sign stories. This is the origin story of Cancer. So we all know Poseidon is the god of the sea, but he was actually forced into hiding after he was attacked by the vicious monster Typhon. So he left a giant crab named Creos in charge of protecting the sea nymphs that lived in his underwater kingdom. But after a while, the sea nymphs grew impatient and they wandered off into the open sea. So Creos asked a giant squid, Vimari, for help. However, things didn't go as planned. Creos didn't know that Vimari was a vampire squid, who swam out, found the sea nymphs that wandered off and ate them. After Krios did find out, there was a huge battle between him and Vimari. And even though Krios won, he sustained severe injuries. Krios wanted to be laid to rest, but he couldn't because he was an immortal crab. So when Poseidon returned, he honored Krios' bravery and relieved his pain by placing him in the sky as a constellation of cancer. But which zodiac sign should I talk about next? Follow to see the rest of the series. Girls, tell me about a time where your quick thinking probably saved your life. 
I'll go first. Two years ago, I was walking my dog at the park and a man approached me and asked to take a picture of her. And I said yes, because why not? It's a picture of a dog. So he starts taking a picture of my dog and then I realized that he was like holding up her collar and then it hit me. My address is on that collar. He's not taking a picture of my dog. He's taking a picture of my address. So I told him that I actually didn't feel comfortable with him having, having a picture of my dog and I asked him to delete it. So he deletes it and then like starts walking away really fast. And I was like, excuse me, sir. No, could you also go into your deleted album and delete it from there? And he goes, I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, mm, you have an iPhone. Everybody has a deleted album. Could you please delete the picture? And he was like, sorry, I don't have a deleted album. And like keeps walking away. And keep in mind, this is like two in the afternoon in a park. Like there's other people around. So now I'm like chasing after him and I'm telling him, sir, I know you have the album. I will show you where the album is. Can you please go onto your phone so that we can delete the picture? Oh, part two. Part two, I'm sorry for the delay. Um, so I'm still chasing after him and people at the park are like starting to look at us now because I'm chasing after a man and I'm telling him to stop walking. And so he stops and I tell him again to delete the photo from the deleted album and he goes, I don't have a deleted album. And I was like, yes, you do. Everybody does, it'll take 10 seconds. And he goes, fine. And he like goes on his phone, and does something for a second. He goes, there, it's gone. And I was like, could I see the deleted album just to make sure it's gone? And he goes, no, you can't look at my phone. And I was like, I don't want to look at your phone. I just want to see the album just to make sure the picture is gone. That's it. And he goes, no, you're not going to look at my phone. And I was like, sir, I'm not going to stop and I'm not going to leave until you show him the album. So please just show me the album so we can be done with this. So he shows me the album. The picture was still there. So I made him delete it in front of my eyes. What if I hadn't noticed that he took a picture of my address? And what if I went home that, that day and, you know, that night when I took my dog out to pee, he was outside waiting for me. I mean... <laughs> One of the most insane serial killers I have ever learned about, I still to this day believe didn't work alone. So you guys know Jack the Ripper, right? Well, this guy not only outlasted and outdid him, but he put New York in one of the biggest states of fear and taunted investigators for years. Before we get into who he is and why I don't think he acted alone, let's talk about what he did. The first kill he ever made was stabbing two young girls on Christmas Eve of 1975. At this time, New York was an absolute shambles. People were being killed and assaulted all the time. Robberies were happening bodies were being found and the police really couldn't keep up with everything so whenever this happened it wasn't like a big news headliner well a few months later two girls were shot sitting in their car both of them ended up surviving but it happened so fast that they didn't have any information on the suspect just some 44 caliber bullets left on scene well the next attack occurred whenever this couple was sitting in a car they reported that the whole car felt like it exploded and the girl looked over and saw a bullet wound in the guy's head because of the bullets used the police were able to make the connections part two to the son of sam so the police noticed that the same shell casing was used and so far all victims were female with medium length brown hair well it did not take long for another attack to occur a man approached two women asking for directions when he asked he took out a gun and shot both of them leaving one paralyzed with a spinal injury and then after this came another couple sitting in a car the police having no leads were like okay we're gonna need to announce this to the public that we have a serial killer on our hands they released the few sketches that they did have, hoping for a lead. He was announced in the paper as the 44 caliber killer. The police also let the public know that he was looking for women with medium length brown hair. So many women during this time cut their hair, dyed it blonde, whatever, so that they didn't match this profile. After this came out, he ends up killing another girl on her way home from school and another couple who was sitting in their car on a date. But this killing was very different. This time he actually left a letter for the police. I'm going to insert the letter. He introduces himself as the son of Sam and his wording is just a little off. So the news decides to write him back. Part four to the son of Sam. Well, a woman ends up calling the police reporting suspicious activity. She was going for a walk when she saw a man hopping into his car. Instead of continuing into his car, he hops out and starts to approach her. She sees him start to take an object out of a bag and she runs the opposite way and then hears gunshots. Learning about all the nearby crimes, she makes the report. She also noticed that he had a parking ticket on his car. So the police find the parking tickets from that day from that area, figures out the license and realizes the vehicle belongs to a guy named David Berkowitz. So the police call dispatchers inquiring about the ticket and a dispatcher named Wheat Carr answers the phone saying that she was his neighbor and says, let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Berkowitz. He's a very strange man who shot my dog that belonged to my father, Sam. So the police were like, hmm, Sam. Well, they get to his house and break into his car without a search warrant. And they find a lot of evidence, including a rifle, a map of the crime scenes, and a letter. So they wait for him to leave his apartment. And when he does, they ask him if he's David Berkowitz. And he responds with, no, I am the son of Sam and you got me. 
part five to the son of Sam. So once they found and arrested David Berkowitz, they brought him in for questioning. And it only took investigators 30 minutes to get him to admit to everything. And his reasoning behind the killings was because of a 6,000 year old demon dog who was speaking to him through the dog of his neighbor. He was the one calling the shots and demanding him to kill. And one particular investigator that was very obsessed with this case named Maury Terry was wondering why he didn't match any of the sketches. It's normal for eyewitnesses to be wrong to some degree, but you wouldn't describe Berkowitz as being six foot and blonde. There was also some worry if the evidence would even hold up in court because they got it without a search warrant. But in court, David admitted to everything, so they didn't even need evidence. He was sentenced 25 years to life for each murder. So case closed, right? Well, if we look back to the letter, there's the name John Wheaties. We Carr and John Carr are Sam Carr's children, Berkowitz's neighbors. And from looking at the eyewitness sketches, the sketches look more like John Carr, Sam's actual son. 